On this week's video, we're going down to Rimby to visit John with Zuki Freak Garage. Sponsored by TRE 4x4 BC and Strikeforce67.ca, the official Canadian home of GoTreads, Canada's professional traction tool. All right, welcome back to Fab and Adventures. Today we're here at Zuki Freak Garage with John, and uh, he's here. He's going to tell us all about the stuff that he does, wiring harnesses and engine swaps and whatnot. Thanks for coming, Ron. You uh, betcha. Good to have you. So, uh, got a few things on the go in here. I got uh, Paul's rig. He actually found me through uh, Fabin Adventures. Cool. It's here for a 16 valve swap. He's working overseas, so we'll get that flanged up for him. Oh, that'll be awesome. Yeah, he'll, cool. I think he'll like it. I got my rig here, uh, the 2 3 aerial swap. A ton of work to do for the <laughs> for the whipsaw run. I for sure bet. I, yeah. I hope I can get it all finished. Oh yeah, you'll get it. And I got another 16 valve swap for Ross that I just got uh, wrapped up. Perfect. So what's the details on this here uh, Samurai? Well, it came in with a bone stock carbureted 1.3. This little engine down yeah, here. Yeah, this guy right here. It ran fine, but winter time, cold starts, and just underpowered. So it's getting a 95 16 valve EFI. Nice. And I'm gonna drop the fuel tank and put the in tank pump right in the tank. Okay. And uh, that's how I do them. Okay. No noise and then. Yeah, you don't have that stupid fuel pump on the rail buzzing away like mine is. Right? right, and if you go, if you need a fuel filter, I use the stock fuel filter. You just go to the parts store. Nice. Ask for a 95 sidekick fuel filter and throw it in. Yeah, nice and simple. Yes. Easy to find parts wherever you got to go and whatnot. Yeah, and the horsepower, you know, 60 horse yeah. to 95. And actually I've been hearing when you put them in a Samurai with little different exhaust and you know, air intakes, they actually put out more yeah. power than that. Well, it made a big so. difference. That 16V, like you did the harness for my yeah, 16V betcha. and you found the motor actually for me. Yeah. That made a huge difference. Like the going from the one three, even though it was turboed and it was kind of getting tired, and going to those 16 V was have made a huge difference. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're a great motor. It's impressive. Like it's just way more drivable. You yeah, know, yeah, it more. makes it. It makes the highway part of driving a Samurai a lot more fun. <laughs> it does, and uh, like what I found is the low and even lugging is better. Yeah. Like I can stay in first gear high range now way longer, even second gear high range longer than I used to be able to. Yeah, for sure. And I bet you it doesn't really burn any more no, fuel than No, I think it's, than, it's than just it. as good or better on fuel yeah, now than exactly. it was when it was turboed, for sure. Best of both worlds. <laughs> so this here's a pretty cool rig. What, uh, what can you tell us about this unit here? Well, this is my uh, 87 Samurai. I've uh, had this since 2008. Wow. I built it up from bone stock. I <laughs> paid $300 for this. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's had a 1.3, a 1.68 valve, a 16 valve, and now a 2.3 area. Wow, so it's had just about all the swaps but a 2.0. Just about, yeah. Other or a than, diesel. <laughs> or a diesel or the 1.3 twin cam. Right. Might have been right. something to try too. I do like my RPMs. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your RPMs that you yeah, like to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was on your intro for a while, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, 513 gears, uh, the 2.3 aerial, 155 horse and that yeah. made a huge difference hey? oh it's fun yeah it's the ask my diffs what they think <laughs> about that uh the two-wheel drive sidekick five-speed transmission and then i've got 513 gears yeah and then i'm gonna go with the tre front and rear the old tre air lockers, air lockers. and the air compressor so Beautiful. try those out because i i like to street drive this yeah and with a spool with these uh, 35 inch boggers it's okay turning corners but if you put all trains on yeah it feels like you're gonna snap it in half and you yeah. you're gonna get a ticket from a <clears throat> cop when they hear you squealing your tires around the <laughs> corner <laughs> well that and I meant like my samurai was sketchy being um, locked in the back yeah. on icy roads oh, yeah it just felt like you're always gonna 
front and back yeah. was going to pass the front, right? Yeah. So being able to unlock that, that's yeah, going to make a sure. big difference for sure. I've done some high speed fish tailing on, <laughs> on the street with this. <laughs> well, they're so darn short, the darn short wheelbase yes, it makes it for, sketchy. For sure. A little bit taller. So any plans, any future plans other than actually, the lockers? Yeah, actually, eventually I plan to, to four link it. Oh, nice. And maybe uh, cut the frame and extend it and do the auto four-speed auto. Oh no is kidding. It, is, yeah, I'm too old for clutches. <laughs> well, we're both getting old for yeah, clutches. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Perfect. Sure. Well, that's pretty wild. I can't wait to see this bad boy in action on uh, the whipsaw. Me neither. I can't. I've never wheeled in BC and Rocks. I'm looking forward to uh, meeting some of those characters out there. <laughs> Rocks and traction so, is a yeah, whole lot different yeah. than muskeg and mud and, and whatnot. Yeah, I'm tired of mud. <laughs> Pretty sure it's gonna be a great time at the Whipsaw. So I see he's got another Samurai in the shop. Tell us about this one. Well, this is an 87 that I did for Ross. It was also a bone stock 1.3 carbed model. And I've put, this is a 98 16 valve in this one. So it's OBD2. So what's the difference between like mine's OBD1? Yes. And OBD2, what's the main uh, difference? These have a crank position sensor and a little bit different that there's no external coil that's in the distributor uh, cap. Oh yeah, right. Um, just a little more wiring. Yeah. They're actually uh, nicer for scan. I, I put the OBD2 port under the dash. Yeah. So you can actually scan this just like it's a new vehicle. You could drive this <laughs> thing down the road, read your speed, your coolant, your volts. Oh wow, it's kinda, so you, yeah. can, you can data log it sort of yeah. thing? Yeah, you can data stream it, you can read your codes. Wow. Yeah, it's, so they make any more power? Uh, I, I wouldn't say they make any more power. It's, they're very similar. Oh, so. okay. But a similar swap, like I mean the engine yeah. and everything is all basically the same. Exactly the same. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a similar swap, same, uh, what do you call, uh, adapters on the back and same motor mounts yeah, and all that stuff. Same motor mounts, so all same. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You betcha. Cool. Cool. So this one's going out the door. Will you yeah. got another one coming in yet? Uh, just that other one of Paul's to finish and then uh, I do have a couple more on the back burner, <laughs> Holy but, crap. but I do need to, I need to work on my own rig. So there might <laughs> yeah. be a little downtime. At well, the whip garage. the whip saw is uh, six months or something away. So yeah. Yeah, you got to get working on yours. Yeah, sometime. I know it's, it's, it's going to be a push to get it finished. <laughs> Pretty cool. So you want to show us a little uh, wiring harness stuff. Sure. We won't go into much detail or anything like that, but you'll show us kind of a uh, unmodified harness and a modified harness, I guess, if you will. Sure. Sounds good. All right. So I see you've got a mess of wiring on the table here. What What's going on here? Well, what we have is this is a 16 valve OBD2 harness after it's been thinned. And that come out of, what would that come out of? That This came out of a 98 tracker, tracker 16 valve. Yeah, this is for my son's son's rig. Oh, okay. So yeah. are, the, are the tracker and... Um, sidekick and all those are they all the same yeah as long as your obd2 or an obd1 they're, oh, okay. they're the same yeah. and this big mess this is an obd1 for paul's rig that i haven't thinned out yet so every wire in the vehicle headlights heater radio that's all in one harness from factory right and i thin it down to just what runs the motor so you like you like cut the harness wherever you got to cut it and strip all the wirings out that you don't need and that's basically what you end yeah, up with. Yeah, more or less I start at the extremities it's like trimming a tree. <laughs> like you a get, bonsai you tree, You get rid right? of the branches you don't need and leave the ones you do need and then at the end you're left with wires from the ECM that either you need them or you don't and I label, mark and it's done. Okay. So what about the 2.3? Is there like more wiring? Yes. The 2.3 harness is uh, is roughly 20 feet long overall. <laughs> and for example, this is what comes out of it when I thin it. <laughs> Holy crap. How do you even know what wires what? Like I'm not, wiring is not my thing. It's rocket appliances. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket appliances. That's this is that's too much wire for me. Yeah, it's a little crazy. No thanks. <laughs> so <laughs> aside from that, so when you're done with the wiring harness, 
how hard is it to hook up? Like when you say you ship a wiring harness to somebody that got you to modify it, what do they have to hook up? Uh, basically, there's going to be a power, 15 amp fused, a memory power, 15 amp fused. There'll be a VSS, vehicle speed sensor. Mm -hmm. There'll be a key power and a tack output and a fuel pump output. That's basically it. And hmm. some grounds to hook up. And I, I label it all so it's it's foolproof and they can call me. Yeah, it's so just basically have, yeah. plug and play. So yeah. you, you click these sensors in onto the engine where they gotta go. Yep. And then you just have a couple of wires that hit your uh, 15. Uh, amp fuse, amp yep. fuse. and then I mount, I mount, I like to mount the ECM up under the glove box yeah. as high as I can put it. Yeah, that's where I mounted mine too, was as high as I could put it up behind the glove box there. Yeah. And it worked good. And then, so then your harness comes out on the passenger side, uh, just kind of up and to the right of the yeah. battery and then you goes betcha. to the engine. So that is just a standalone engine management. Yeah, I actually start lots of them on the floor with a fuel tank yeah. and a battery. Yeah. And so more or less when this is done, you could run your Suzuki engine in a wheelbarrow. Yeah, or if you had Go -kart. or if you had a tube buggy or something anything. like that, right? Yeah, anything. Yeah, cool. That's pretty darn cool. Right on. So what got you into Samurai's all together, you know, and maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, a little background or something. Well, when I, my dad had a Toyota back in 1980. Oh, like a first gen Toyota yeah. truck? Yeah, and we went wheeling lots, like right local here where I live now. Yeah. And uh, his cousin had an LJ81. Oh, no kidding. Truck. Yeah, brand new, <laughs> baby blue. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and he would go everywhere we went with those stock tiny little tire. No kidding. Yeah, so wow. that, was, that was my first Suzuki experience. Right. And then I never really had anything to do with them until about 2008. Really? And when you when you picked this I, one up? Well, I actually bought an SJ410 first. Oh, okay. And then within about a month, I had three. <laughs> <laughs> the addiction. And, and then now I've had over 60 and I've had 12. Holy 12 crap. One time. So. 60, six zero. Yeah, yeah with sidekicks and and, uh, Holy crap, included, yeah. that is a lot. So you know your Samurai's and Suzuki's inside out, yeah, right? Pretty much. He's the guy I contact when I have questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I answer lots of questions every day. <laughs> For sure, you betcha. Yeah. So, so you're a mechanic by trade? Yes, I've been a Red Seal Auto Tech since 96. 96, yeah. well that's a long time. Yeah. Kind of dating ourselves here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say 96? <laughs> pretty cool. So, I'm gonna leave the contact info for John here in a few spots in the video and I'll leave it down below here also. And uh, if you guys wanna contact John, go ahead and call him up, email or whatever the contact is. And uh, if you got any questions or you want swaps done or harnesses done, mail-in harnesses, he'll take a harness in by mail and, yeah, you bet. I and modify it. Coming in from Texas. Nice, week, nice, awesome. You guys are going two, three. So yeah. They're gonna like the power. Oh yeah, their deaths <laughs> won't be happy. <laughs> well, you always find the weak link, weak yeah. link when you go up in oh, power yeah. for sure, right? So uh, I wanna thank John for having us over here and just showing us around well, in the thanks, shop. Thanks for coming. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. I didn't realize there was that much wiring that come out of those stupid harnesses. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. Like you've showed me pictures, but it's you don't know it until you see how much wiring there is. Yeah. It's crazy. So if you guys are liking this sort of content, go ahead, subscribe, share, like to these videos, hit the bell to be notified, and we'll catch you guys next Friday.